Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna be doing another trying new makeup. There's so much new stuff to get through that I'm just trying to get through all the new releases. So you guys have been requesting me to go over the LYS foundation. I didn't use it in my previous video because I didn't want it to affect how I felt about all of the products on top. If I don't like my base, it can really throw off everything. So I'm hoping I like this, but I wanna do a more natural look today. So I'm gonna use the LYS primer and then the serum foundation. I also have the Bite Upswing mascara so I have a sample of that I want to test out. I also have some exciting products that I really want to try on the complexion. I picked up the new Dior Backstage Face and Body Powder No Powder. I got it in a shade to use as a bronzer so I swatched this already and I feel like I'm gonna love it. I hope so. I also wanted to try out the Ofra Steph Toms collab. This is Milk and Cookies Highlighter so I thought we could play around with that. I have the other shade of the LYS blush which I might use it really just depends, but I also have the Vive blushes. I purchased four of the five when they came out and I just haven't had a chance to demo them. I've used a couple just by myself like off camera, but I thought maybe we could play with this. Maybe we'll use both, who knows? And then I also made a purchase to KKW recently and I repurchased their concealer. I remember liking it, it's been a long time, so I thought we would just revisit this, see what we think. And then I also thought we could use the About Face lip products again just to use them again, see how we're feeling, try to get our full thoughts on that. Now I wanted to say that I have a ton of trying new makeup coming and that I've already done, but I am doing follow-ups. I just posted a roundup of all the products. So if you're looking for reviews check that video down below and then obviously it'll take me a while to use these products and then I will give you full reviews in a few weeks or a month or something so anyways I hope you guys enjoy this video if you're new here I hope you'll subscribe and let's go ahead and begin So I wanna start off with the Bite Mascara. This is called the Upswing Full Volume Mascara. I used a code on Sephora to get this as a sample just because it's a new product. I didn't wanna spend the full money on it if I could just try it out for you guys. Maybe I will if I enjoy it. I have to say that it feels like it's gonna be clumpy. Just looking at the wand, it's very wet. It has a ton of product on it. It's a thicker wand, which it's typical of volumizing mascaras, but it just feels like it's gonna clump. So it's one of those that I'm actually going to scrape off some of the product because I just feel like if I don't, it's gonna be a mess. So I'm just gonna do mascara today. I've already curled my lashes, so let's go ahead and start applying. Okay, so it's giving me length. I definitely say you wanna wipe off the wand just based on this. I mean, oh, it's all over my lid though. I don't usually have that problem, but I'm having a hard time. I really don't think I can do another layer because I just feel like it's we're gonna have spider lashes. I just wanted to show you like close up how much product is like clumped on the wand. So I'm gonna go ahead and start on this eye. So this is what our lashes are looking like. I have to say, this is one of the more finicky mascaras I've ever tried, and it could be because it's a sample. It's so clumpy. One layer, I don't think I can do any more, and I have it on my lid, which I usually don't have a huge issue with. I'll have to see how it wears. It reminds me, the wand reminds me of the Damn Girl from Too Faced, but I actually like that one. This can get clumpy for sure, but this one, I feel like it's even like wiping off the product. It was hard to avoid that. I feel like, it can go to spider chunky lashes really quick and there's no return on that. So I don't know if this is gonna be my favorite just because I feel like it's just really finicky to work with and I don't love that. I'm gonna let the mascara dry down so I can remove it with a spoolie, the stuff that got on my lid, but let's move on to complexion. This is the LYS Secure Skin Gripping Serum Primer. Pour and shine control. It has the really pretty packaging with the triangle detail. I have heard from people that I've watched reviews that this pills comes out like a clear gel. So I'm really hoping we don't have any pilling issues. Definitely feels like it has a stick to it. I don't smell a fragrance, which is nice. Definitely sticky. I'm not noticing any pilling at the moment, but I have had comments of people saying that it does pill with the foundation, but this is definitely gripping. I don't see it doing anything for my pores at all. 
but I could see how it would grip. So I'm interested to try it with the foundation. So next I wanna go in with the LYS Triple Fix Serum Foundation. This packaging is absolutely stunning. I picked up the shade MG5. I think it might be a little bit dark for me, but I love even just like the pump on it is so aesthetically pleasing. So this is supposed to have a light to medium coverage and it has skincare benefits inside. So this is what the texture looks like. It's definitely runny. I'm gonna start off with just a flat top kabuki. The coverage looks, I would say they're right, like a low medium off the bat. I always feel like dewy foundations never want to stick to my nose. Shade may be a little dark, but I'm going in with a sponge right now just to really blend. I can tell right away this is like serum-y like it says, which usually aren't my favorite. Just because they enhance my texture, you can see like every pore, even in my forehead, just looks pronounced. So we'll see how it looks after powder. I have a 2021 resolution just to not get so like down if a foundation doesn't look like phenomenal on me. I think it's pretty natural because when you're on camera, if you don't like the way your makeup is looking, it's sort of just irritating. It's like, oh, I have to like put this out to the world and look at my texture and you know, you feel like just not confident, I guess. Like for me, this is enhancing my texture, probably one of the worst offenders. Ooh, but Powder can change a lot. Ooh, okay, I must have a dry patch up here. Can you see how it's like clinging? Maybe it was like patching, but can you see how it's like rough and clingy right there? Okay, so here's another reason that I don't love these foundations. Look at this. See how that just swipes like right off on my nose? So I'm trying to get it to set but it's like patching. It just, these foundations like cling and don't want to stick to my nose. Like what is going on with my nose right here? Do you guys see that? I want to love these dewy foundations. Like I want to love them. I love the dew, but all I can focus on is how my nose is patchy and my texture just looks absolutely horrific. All I can see is like texture, 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 texture. So I just wiped a little bit off my nose. I'm trying to kind of reapply. I don't really know what went funky there. Okay, so here is what the foundation is looking like. So I have a few observations. First of all, as I said, I want to love these dewy foundations. I like the glow that it gives, but they just don't want to stick to my skin. They slip and slide, and my texture just looks so pronounced. Like, all I can see is, like, texture here and here. Now, powder will hopefully help that. Another thing I noticed is that it's clinging to dry patches, which I don't know if I've ever seen this happen, ever, on any foundation. So that's weird. I thought like maybe I hadn't blended it, but it looks like I just have dry skin right there and it's just not looking good. So if you have dry patches, I would say that it's going to cling. The other thing is I think the shade's a little dark for me. I'm hoping that with the concealer we can kind of make things work. My last trying new makeup video, or the one before last, the Marc Jacobs foundation just did not work for me and it was too dark and then my concealer was too dark and I just felt like, ugh. So let's move on. We'll see how this goes. I have to say the packaging is beautiful, but I just don't think this is gonna be for me, unfortunately. I just, my skin just does not look its best with super hydrating foundations. Typically, so let's move on to the KKW concealer. I used to really like this I remember it being good coverage creamy nice and blendable. So I picked up the shade 4.5 I think when I first got it it was in a shorter component and now it has sort of a longer um, I guess jar it has a doe foot I'm going to use this to brighten up like my forehead Everything and I usually don't do that with concealer just because I don't want to add cakiness but I just feel like I'm looking way too just deep. So hopefully this will sort of brighten the center of my face. It blends beautifully, as you can see, very quick. I'm afraid to like touch my nose because I just know that foundation's like ready to jump off. I'm gonna go ahead and set the face. Hopefully that will help. I'm gonna use my Kimchi Chic uh, Puff Puff Pass Powder in 
03 translucent. And I'm gonna pull this down to see if we can soften some of that texture coming through. Powder is always a big help if you struggle with texture. It definitely helps to smooth out. Okay, so I quickly went off camera and did my brows and I'm looking at the foundation once it's set and it definitely did smooth out the texture. So that's good for me, but it did take away the glowiness. So that's kind of the double-edged sword. The glowiness looked really pretty, but the texture just really was pronounced. I feel like it's just one of those that's not going to be perfect for me, but I wanted to demo it for you guys anyway. So now I want to go into bronzer. So this is the new Dior Backstage Face and Body Powder No Powder. This is so pretty. I love the backstage line, which a lot of you know. I picked up the shade five neutral. It was hard to tell online. It's a little deeper than I thought. I'm gonna give you a swatch. It definitely has a radiance to it. So I'm hoping it's not too glowy or too deep. I'm gonna use a light hand. The reason I picked this up in a bronzer is because I knew it had a little bit of radiance and I knew that I wouldn't like that in my T-zone because that would just enhance my texture. So I'm just using a really light hand just because this is pretty dark. Like in the pan, it looks quite dark. So it's blending nicely. It's pigmented. I don't feel like it's too pigmented, but it's warm on the skin. When you look at it in the pan, it does look sort of, I guess, neutral. I mean, they're all neutral. I think every single one is like one, two, three, four neutral. But on the skin, it does have a little bit more warmth than I was expecting. So I don't know. I might like it more if I had, you know, my perfect base on. But I don't dislike it. It's blending nicely. I mean, it looks nice. It doesn't have too much of a sheen, but it definitely has some sort of sheen. So for blush, for some reason, this LYS is just calling my name. I might use this and then use a little bit of a Vive blush on top. This is the Higher Standard Satin Matte Cream Blush in Inspire. I used Confident in my last video, which was a little bit more of like a neutral pink. This one is just gorgeous, fiery, like bright colored, almost like a red terracotta. I'm gonna use the back of my sponge, and the way I like to apply really any uh, cream blush is to apply it on my sponge and then apply on the back of my hand just to diffuse the color. And I'm gonna go in. Now this one seems a little bit less pigmented or not as uh, emollient as the Confident one. Ooh, that is pretty. Yes, I'm gonna bring this all over the center of my face. This one just feels a little bit more dry, but that can be a good thing because it's gonna be hard to overdo it. I felt like with the other one, it, I was like, whoa, that pigment, it's a lot of pigment where this one, I can build it more. So I'm gonna go like over my nose here, sort of giving me that sun-kissed look. This formula is nice. I don't have any lifting, even after all that powder. I put some powder down here because I feel like I kind of brought my bronzer down a little low, but I wanna go in next with the Ofra Cosmetics Steph Toms collaboration. This is a split pan highlighter in Milk and Cookies. So you have two shades here, and one is a little bit more bright, the other one's more golden, but they're both similar. I feel like a lot of people could use this. Ofra has really great highlighters, so we're gonna go ahead and highlight the face. So I'm gonna start off, ooh, this is powdery. I'm starting off with the deeper shade, and I'm using a light hand because I have that cream down. I feel like it's really gonna grip on that. And then I'm gonna jump into the lighter shade to kind of top it. Ooh, okay, the lighter shade is like, wow, I didn't notice in swatches. Holy moly. I never freak out about highlighters. Like I'm not the person that applies a highlighter and like has like, oh my God, it highlighted. Like, but that is intense. Okay, so I'm gonna try to buff this in. Wow. I think we've gone there and we can't go back. So, you know, we're just gonna have to keep on keeping on. Okay, so I feel like I'm getting a little bit of a cast here. So I'm gonna go back in with my sponge, just right on the kind of center here, just to sort of diffuse. Holy crap, that highlighter. It's beautiful, but woo! I mean, if you like, 
intense, I think you would like this. Okay, I think we have a lot of blush on, so I'm gonna have to wait to use the Vive blushes. Just let me know if you guys wanna see a video on that. But let's go ahead and finish off. I'm gonna go in with this About Face liner. This is probably my favorite product from her. I did a video on these, but I wanted to revisit. This is the lip liner in the shade Clockwork. So I was going to use the liquid lipsticks from About Face, but I just don't feel like they're going to match because we have that burnt, flush skin going on. So I'm actually going to use uh, a product from Wayne Goss. This is my favorite lipstick from him in the shade Orchid. It's just that, like, super beautiful. I feel like it just matches the blush. All right guys, so here's my finished makeup look and I wanna tell you my thoughts on the products. Starting off with the LYS Secure Skin Gripping Serum Primer. So definitely feel that gripping. It goes on like a thick gel, but it really does have that tack. I will say though, after a couple minutes, it does sort of just dry down and not really have that stickiness. So if you're gonna use it for a gripping primer, I would say that you'd have to apply your primer within a couple minutes of applying this. Don't let it sit or soak in. I don't think that it really did any pore smoothing for me, but shine control I'll have to see as the day goes on, but don't love it, don't hate it. I feel like it wore nicely or it applied nicely under my foundation. It didn't pill up like I was hearing other people uh, experiencing, so that's good. I love the packaging, the price is good. I just don't know if it's my type of primer because I love a pore smoothing primer. In terms of the LYS Serum Foundation, I feel like this is exactly what it says it's gonna be. It's a light medium coverage. It's gonna give you a very hydrating look. It feels like a serum mixed in with pigments. It's just very dewy. It's not gonna do any favors for your pores or your texture. And I noticed that it did cling to dry patches, which sort of strange for a dewy, dewy, dewy foundation. Once I set it, I actually like it a lot more. I feel like I could wear this and be comfortable throughout the day. I just personally don't like foundations that are super hydrating and I feel like they're slipping and sliding and gunking up. When I first applied it, I was like, oh. My texture just looked really rough to me and if you have perfect skin, maybe you know, you'd know you be really into this, but definitely have to set it with a powder. So if you try this and you feel like your skin looks super textured, try to really press the powder in around your textured area Areas, and that did help quite a lot. Don't love it, but I like it. We'll have to keep playing with it. But again, this is not gonna be a full glam foundation for me personally. This is gonna be an everyday wearing a look like this. In terms of the cream blush, I have to say I adore this and I like this shade probably better than the other one. I am partial to those like burnt colors. Like this reminds me of the M Cosmetics Faded Clementine sort of vibe. That one's definitely more orange and brown tan. This reminds me of my favorite, I think it's Golden Hour from Tower 28. Just that really sun-kissed color. It's like red, orange, leaning terracotta. This is a beautiful shade. I love it. I love both of the ones I tried. They did not mess with my powder, but they brought back life to my skin. So I feel like I look quite hydrated and nice, but I didn't use a setting spray or anything like that. It really was just adding this on, brought back the life to my skin because once I powdered it was like really matte, then this brought it back. So for me, this is just such a great formula. I feel like all the brands are killing it recently with the cream blushes because they're making them so compatible with people that use powder or people that don't use powder. So I feel like they're really hitting the mark there where it's a universal product. Everybody can use it. Even if you've never used creams or you heavily set your face, you can use this. So this is a yes for me. In terms of the Dior Backstage Powder No Powder, I really like this so far. I'll have to keep trying it. I feel like the shade's a little deep for me. It's buildable. I heard some people saying it's sheer. I don't really think it's sheer, but it's not like crazy pigmented off the rip. I wanted to get this in a bronzer because I just know anything with like radiance, I'm not gonna put in my T-zone. I'm not gonna set under my eyes or my T-zone with. So the only way for me to use a powder that has radiance and sort of like a glimmer or satin finish, definitely not gonna put that here. As you guys know, I'm a huge fan of the Backstage line and I love the packaging on this. It's just so beautiful and aesthetically pleasing. And I think that it's nice. It has a little bit of shimmer in it or satin finish, but it's not glittery, chunky. It's 
not like putting a highlighter all over your face. I didn't notice that this enhanced my texture, just gave me a little bit of that healthy glow. So excited to keep trying this out with different foundations. In terms of the Ofra and Steph Tom's collaboration, this is a highlighter in Milk and Cookies. So when I first tried the gold, I was like, oh yeah, that's pretty. Uh, when I put the light shade on, it knocked my socks off. I mean, I don't know because swatching them, they both look, you know, blinding and beautiful, but something about this shade, when you put it on, it's like glowing to the gods, okay? This is like Jaclyn highlighter realm. It almost makes me want to compare this to the Jaclyn pressed highlighter formula just because they're both just next level glow. Thinking of a regular highlighter and then multiply by 10, that's what these are. So if you want that banging glow off the rip. You don't have to build it up, but it still looks pretty like, I don't know, like it melted into my skin. I don't feel like my texture looks bad. It doesn't look powdery. I have a little bit of a cast, I guess, from the front, maybe a little bit because I brought it up high, but it's just melting into the skin, beautiful, but like beaming. So for me, this is a yes. On the other hand, let's talk about a no, and that's gonna be this Bite Beauty Upswing Mascara. Now, I don't know if it's just because it's a deluxe sample, but the clumping on this, this is messy and clumpy, even wiping off the wand, it got all over my lid. That's not really a problem I usually have, and for me, I just don't wanna fuss with it. And if I had a full eyeshadow look on and then I put this on and it got all over my eyeshadow, it would just like annoy me. So for me, it's just too clumpy. It reminds me of Too Faced Damn Girl, but bad. I like the Too Faced Damn Girl. I feel like it really gives, you know, nice volume. It can get clumpy, but this one is like, three swipes and you've got spider lashes. So for me, I'm just not willing to work with a mascara that takes that much finessing. So for me, this is just really clumpy and messy and it does give me length, but it's nothing crazy that my other mascaras wouldn't do. And then in terms of the KKW concealer, I think I'm gonna like it. It did brighten up. I feel like it's a good shade to really highlight the center of my face. This is a creamy formula. It's not super drying. It's about medium coverage. So I'm excited to play with this again. I remember loving it, but it's just been so long. And then the About Face lip liner is my favorite thing from her line. If you were wanting to try anything. I think this is probably the best product. These are just really nice pigmented. I like the color of this. It's a lip liner that I would use most days. So that is everything for this trying new makeup. I hope you guys enjoyed. I wanted to focus really on the skin. Let me know what you think. I know you guys really wanted to see me try out the LYS foundation. So let me know your thoughts down below. I will link everything that I use today. If you're new here, I hope you'll subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.